bottle that uh, played out here had a very big importance. It was the end of the French Empire, it was the end of the Napoleonic Wars, and most importantly, it marked the end of French hegemony over the world. From that period on, with the start of the Victorian era, England would play a more significant role. Until now, when we are speaking English to all of you who might come from different nationalities and understand everything that I'm saying, it was, as Victor Hugo said, not only a battle, it was the change of the universe. Can you imagine that this village played such an important role? I mean, that there was a very big battle here with many victims and um, yeah, Napoleon was here fighting uh, with his troops against uh, the allied forces of Prussia, Russia, the British army um, and was that it? Austria, yeah. They got together to fight against France. So a summary of the Battle of Waterloo. Uh, in 1815, French troops came here under the order of Napoleon to fight against the British and the Allied forces. The British were led by uh, the Duke of Wellington. They fought a very fierce battle where the French lost. Napoleon had underestimated his own power. He was already in exile just before the battle. He was in exile and then he came back one year later to try to regain power. Um, then he fought his last battles before losing Waterloo where he said after only four days after losing the battle he said okay I will quit forever um, send me to St. Helen where I will stay there until I die in exile and I will I, I promise to never come back Wellington himself didn't want to fight much but he said to his soldiers if you stand fast if you don't surrender I will promise you a generation of peace and Europe was tired of war Napoleon was a very naughty kid who um, made wars everywhere he went to and he said dude I'm tired of this um, I will just relax on an island and yeah I don't want to do anything else in life of course the British then saw this battle of Waterloo as the most significant one ever and they said without them the world would still be under French dom domination but to be honest I don't know what uh, what would have been better of course Napoleon was a very cruel ruler but later uh, uh, Fran France became more liberal and uh, I don't know what would have happened if Napoleon had won what would have happened if uh, the French Empire had stayed like it was in the past we'll never know but uh, maybe the museum will offer us some answers presiding in the Baroque style this is the last monument of the Spanish era in Belgium when they were governing the Kingdom of the Netherlands. The Church of Saint Joseph. But by far the most important attraction here in Waterloo is the Wellington Museum here which tells you about the story of the Battle of Waterloo and its repercussions. However, if you go further down the road, around uh, five or six kilometers down the road, 
you will find uh, the real side of the battle with several monuments but we didn't come with the car we came with the train and uh, with the bus it takes an extra half an hour to get there so we decided not to go there just to look at some statue um, but yeah technically that's where the battlefield took place around six kilometers south of here <laughs> The nations of Europe at the Congress of Vienna were defining the borders after um, the Napoleonic Wars and uh, it was of course um, not so good for smaller states um, that were defeated like Poland, Saxony and Westphalia but for the victorious, victorious states, um, especially England, it was um, great because they could redefine Europe however they wanted. The Congress of Vienna was um, finally signed on the 9th of June of 1815. A couple of days later, I believe it was on the 18th of June, Napoleon um, started the Battle of Waterloo and lost it. The Duke of Wellington was writing his report on this table that he would then send to the UK. Mr. Wellington was born as Arthur Wesley in Dublin, Ireland. He and his mother moved to Brussels where he studied French. He was at a private military academy in France. Then he enters the infantry corps, politics as well, and has several successful military com campaigns like the one in the Netherlands, India, Spain and Portugal with the Peninsular War, and finally he takes part in the Congress of Vienna and the victory at Waterloo. He becomes commander-in-chief of the British Army and later even a premier, a prime minister. Finally he dies. That was his funeral car, very well decorated, ornamented. He was a really important person. We shouldn't forget that even though it is praised as an English victory, um, there was more than only England against France. For example, you had the Prussians who also took part in the battle. And this is General Blücher, um, who was acting for the Prussians. He was born in Rostock in the north of Germany and uh, first he fought for the Swedes but after he got captured by the Prussians he decided to change sides. He fought several battles, became governor of Musta and um, then entered Paris, um, battled against uh, Napoleon at Ligny and Waterloo and then finally he died as the commander-in-chief of the Prussian army. Blücher. For the Prussians it was also a very important battle because finally the unified German territories kind of um, showed that they had enough strength to become a European power, something that many nations didn't want to believe. The Netherlands also took part in the battle 
of Waterloo, you can see many nations needed to get together to defeat Napoleon. Napoleon was very hard to defeat because strategically he was a master and took many lives and many commanders, many countries to um, finally end the Napoleonic wars and the French hegemony. So these are instruments that were used during amputations that were very common in the past because they didn't have um, the medical equipment that we have nowadays. This for example is a tourniquet that was used to reduce the blood pressure um, to help during amputations and they used a knife like this, an amputation knife Really scary to think about it, but uh, yeah, that is what they had in the past. And many people in battle um, lost their leg or their arms because of that. How can you define the outcome of Waterloo? Good, bad, I would say apocalyptic. Um, there were buildings that were smoldering, fields were destroyed, dead and wounded men everywhere. In total there were like 60,000 losses mm -hmm. um, just there on the battlefield with amputated extremities and uh, you know something very crazy you need to imagine and uh, something interesting to note is that the infections killed more people than the bullets themselves. So I would say all in all, yes, um, the battle was won, but at which price? Um, yeah, we just tried to get some water and uh, yeah, this happened. Well. So this is after the Congress of Vienna, as you can see, a lot goes to the Netherlands, Prussia is uh, still a mess, Spain is just like it is today, and Portugal, France is like it is today, more or less, yeah, I think, Switzerland, Italy does not exist yet. Austria, Hungary um, existed back then. Ottoman Empire is quite big. The Russian Empire is enormous. Yeah, and then Denmark, uh, Sweden, Norway, Great Britain, and Ireland. Yeah, so that was everything. I hope you learned a bit about Waterloo. We definitely did, and uh, yeah, we might go and stop a bit in Brussels before we go tomorrow. Uh, so I would say, yeah, thank you for watching and see you around.